thank you, panelists, for your insights and and your suggestions and your visions that you presented to us this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, I think one of the things that, uh, that Dr. Webb expressed about picking up a piece of paper is basically what the Carnegie Council has given us by saying, let's have a global ethics day. Let's have a dialogue. Let's have an exchange. Uh, let business leaders involve themselves in it. Let politicians involve themselves in it. Let political scientists, business guys, let's talk about the values it takes and the values it will take for us to go forward as we grow and as our globe uh, becomes more and more populated and we have a greater strain on our resources. And before journey, I would like for us to turn the mic on and let each panelist uh, go through and add whatever thoughts they would like to add. I'm using them a short for words and I really don't know what I can add because those are all very, very, very difficult acts to follow. Um, you know, this is the beginning and I think that's the message that we say. Let's make it a great beginning. We've already done that. Let's follow through. That's the most important thing I would say. And my plan, such as it was, was to wait until the question and answer period to talk about Texas Tech's nearly emerging quality enhancement plan. This has been in the works for about a year and a half now, and we are expecting to send our completed plan to the commission by mid-December or shortly thereafter. The QEP is a once every 10 years project. It lasts for five years, and it's really a way for the accreditor to walk the talk of quality by encouraging each college and university to find a project that will increase student learning or improve the environment for student learning in a significant way and devote substantial resources to that project over a five-year period. So we have had three different campus-wide committee groups now working on this, various stages of it, and the Topic Selection Committee met beginning uh, over a year ago until just about this time last year. They looked at all kinds of evidence and data about what students at Texas Tech do well, what they fall down a little bit on. We looked at the CLA, uh, the, the uh, Collegiate Learning Assessment. We looked at uh, some other uh, assessments of math, of science, of writing, uh, called the CAP tests. We looked at the online senior assessment. We looked at core curriculum assessments. We looked at residence life. We looked at the health center. We looked at academic advising assessments. And really did a very thorough survey of all the different data we could collect about what would benefit the learning of Texas Tech students the most. And what that committee recommended was communication in a global society. The Topic Development Committee that is charged and will meet immediately after this, by the way, uh, they have a, a weekly meeting uh, and, and I'm going right there from this, has refined that idea and just as one of the watchwords for our first QEP comes from the song that we call our alma mater, the sort of theme song of the university, not the fight song, but the song that really encompasses the values of Texas Tech. Uh, that line was, strive for honor evermore. And I think we all know that and have heard about that. Well, because I'm a musicologist, one fine day I decided I'd look at the words to that song. And in reviewing the text, I found that one of the lines a little earlier in the song is, bear our banners far and wide. And I thought, we've got a name for our new QEP. So we will be looking at, bear our banners far and wide, communicating in a global society. And the committee recommended a change from communication to communicating because it's more personal and more immediate and more action oriented. So we're very eager to begin pilot projects, first of all, 
to improve communicating by helping students write better, speak better, and present information in visual means better. Uh, we are going to try to do that in contexts that evoke global society. We know that Texas Tech may be geographically somewhat isolated out here on the South Plains, but we are neither culturally nor intellectually isolated at this university. We are taking deliberate steps to increase our international student enrollment at the graduate and undergraduate levels. And I have used a, a respiration metaphor. We breathe the world in here through our diverse faculty, the diversity of our degree programs and our certificate programs and the various uh, organizations and other things we can offer to our students. But then we want to respire out into the global community people who are, to, to evoke our mission statement, global, uh, I'm sorry, ethical leaders uh, who will be able to succeed in a global and diverse workplace. Um, in closing, I just wanted to touch upon what Dr. Pattis Patterson had said about self-understanding. Um, Aristotle and Socrates taught ethics as a virtue of self-knowledge. So uh, when he mentioned that, it reminded me of this. And it's very important that when we reflect upon ourselves, we're also thinking about our ethical beliefs. A way that we can grow, how we can progress in that is through dialogue. Um, to engage in these opportunities to learn from others and share our own beliefs and you know really take those beliefs and see how we can merge or apply those beliefs from wherever they are, from another country, from another city, another culture, it doesn't matter. How we can apply and merge those beliefs with what we do in our own lives at this moment. So um, yes, being having this um, understanding or this consciousness of self knowledge of self-responsibility. It's very important to becoming these global citizens. So, because it's, it's, very, it's, it's very important to have um, an open mind and also be willing to accept and share these new ideas that are, ever, that are forever changing. So, um, that's all I wanted to say, thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, I mentioned at the beginning of my little spiel that it's important to have critical discussions on college campuses and I didn't really get a chance to conclude on that and although we're talking about global issues I think that every college campus in the, in the world is dealing with issues right here and there. Um, I think it is important to have critical discussions on that rather than just um, debating on social media or commenting here and there and, and hiding in your chair while you do that. I think it's important to get out and uh, talk about these things in a public arena. Um, that is central, I think, to finding a solution rather than just perpetuating um, the fight and, and the problem that it is. So um, argue with others and argue with respect. Um, I think that is very critical. And um, although some of, these, some of the issues we're facing on our campus are isolated, um, it connects to a global world. And if we can begin to try to have these conversations here at Texas Tech, um, hopefully that will begin a thinking pattern that happens elsewhere. So thank you. I don't really have a lot to add since I had the, the, the luck of being the last one, but uh, I, would, I would like to say that I feel like I have learned a lot just from this experience today. And I'm, I'm proud, I don't know if anybody else is going to say this, so I'm going to say it. I'm proud to have colleagues like Dr. Ferguson, Dr. Patterson, Dr. Parsonell. And I'm really proud to have students like Ms. Park and Mr. Hatch here. Aren't they great? Yeah. I want to. I want to say they're the they're the worst ones. They're the we got them here because they're terrible at this kind of thing. So think of the good ones out there, students. No, you're wonderful kids, and I'm sorry, kids. I shouldn't say that, but you're wonderful, and uh, I'm I'm proud to be associated with you. Well, I'm glad. I thought you were talking about your colleagues. <laughs> uh, before we adjourn. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Without any questions, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.